I definitely think in the last probably five years uh, or four years, I've really realized that um, far after I'm gone from here, that I will be a part of music history. Um, you know, when I think back of people I used to just look at pictures of when I was like five years old or like, you know, and just to think that like people even mention my name in the same sentence as any of those individuals is, yeah. lets me know that I've, I've, I've accomplished something far beyond probably my wildest dreams, you know? Right. To me, a, a classic would be a body of work that shaped um, that year and the years and the years afterwards and had a massive, massive impact mm -hmm. on the music being made, on the culture. I think I have classic albums, you know? I definitely think uh, Take Care, of course, is a, is a, is, was a big moment, you know? Um, was a class. I, so, so sometimes you have to revisit some of the projects and realize how, you know, how well they were. <sighs> Again, I think it was just one of those, one of those, uh, those ov overly confident <laughs> statements that felt like a great note to start a, a album on. Um, well, we are in uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, at my at my house, which is a nice thing to say, because it's uh, been a few years in the making. I just moved in about like two weeks ago, maybe. Okay. So still getting settled, getting adjusted. I've been just, I actually just had a conversation with the guys the other day, because we were kind of in a stride for music, and I took like the last like two weeks to myself, pretty much. And I mean, you know, you just get so caught up in work that. Um, that you forget that like, you know, you have like a personal life. And, so like, this you place know, is kind of building a balance? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is like sort of like, I, I mean, I live here like pretty much by myself, aside, you know, so um, yeah, it just, it's, just, it's just bringing me a lot of balance, a lot of peace, uh, you know, a lot of time to reflect. The main thing is we, to you, to everybody, man, you're the artist of the tens. This is your decade. It's Thank a decade you. of dominance. I feel like that needs to be said. Like, like even the definition of appropriating a culture is is not supporting that culture, right. doing songs with people who are deeply rooted in that culture, giving opportunity to people who are in that culture. Yeah. That's not appropriating. Appropriating is taking it for your own personal gain and denying that that it was ever inspired from yeah. this. That's 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 the true disservice that somebody could do to. Yeah the UK, to dance hall, to Afro beats. Me, I've always, 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 any time I embark on one of those journeys, yeah. I ensure that I'm not only paying all due respects verbally, yeah. but like I give, I mean, I make a point to give, the look. Yeah. give, <laughs> give opportunity to people that I respect, you know? It seems like that's like been a constant theme throughout all of your albums. Like you yeah. give a lot of new artists looks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my greatest talent is writing, you know, and that's why people ask me to write songs for them. And yeah, I want to just encourage anybody like, look, if it makes a great song and you're the one that's voicing it, but it's you and this other person that's cooking it up, you're, you're not doing anything wrong, you know? And that's like a, just, again, from me speaking to any new artist, like don't let anybody tell you that you're not supposed to collaborate on you. you I'm not collaborating with anybody on, you know, uh, Marvin's Room or, you know, like yeah. mm -hmm. the, the R&B records that are, you know, other than me and Party. Like I love working with Party. So I think the idea was like, try to discredit using MC that, that all of that doesn't come from your pen. Of course. You're saying that comes from your pen. Charged up, back to back. And, and, and second. <laughs> yeah. And then I had made the decision that I was gonna, um, I had made the decision that I was gonna uh, go again. That's part of like your legacy, you know, and I feel like since the beginning, you were always legacy minded. What I think is interesting though too, like, sorry B, that is, uh, with all the success though, I don't necessarily view Thank Me Later, your debut is like the hip hop debut success. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely probably the one project that like maybe had the like the least personal touches. Um, and that was just kind of just based off how people were making me feel like, yo, you need to be, you know, it was just, it was in a, it was in a different era, man. And also I'm pretty sure being from Canada was some pressure, you know, coming out of Toronto. I saw in a previous interview with Complex, like in 2009, you said like the city is known for hate and he never had really had that icon. But, you know, like a hometown hero, you know, look, being looked on as that person. <clears throat> um, it would be um, giving, giving the city an identity. Right. Um, um, within the music scene, like it used to be called the Screwface Capital. 
It's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, out in the world is one of one of respect. It's like really, I think that my career has a lot of integrity, and I think I'm very excited about that because I think I could have let that drop a bunch of times, yeah. you know. Um, and I also think one of my biggest accomplishments is the fact that I didn't let this massive, massive change in my life destroy me, you know? Mm -hmm. I still don't, I'm, I still don't do drugs, you know? I drink, but even if I drink every day, I don't drink to black out, I don't right. drink to escape my sadness, I don't drink to the point that it affects my family or my career. I think I'm just happy that I'm still intact, you know? That's my biggest accomplishment. I made a lot of money. And you know, you just think of where those guys started. I mean, it's only right that there's gonna be a lot of gray area over 20 years of, you know, hustlers coming out of New Orleans to, to go on and pretty much keep Universal alive. Facts. Um, the market yeah. shares. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and that's, yeah. So it, it's really, it's, it's really kind of, I, I kind of stay out of it. It's, it's not really my business. And obviously this guy over here has ensured that my business is straight. Right. And that I'm able to, you know, just see the fruits of my labor, and that's that's what I'm uh, very grateful for, you know. And 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 you know, as well with 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 Jay and Rap a lot, and those guys who were also involved in that situation, I'm obviously very grateful for them. Yeah. Um, so you never felt like to, people was to hype up so many people involved with your career. You didn't never felt like there were too many people in your pockets per se, or like. No, I was grateful. Like, that was your first, I guess, legitimate like serious hit, right? Like, yeah. how did that change your life and like? It's interesting, a lot of times, the, the song that breaks a hip-hop artist drew may not even be in the set list anymore, but that, that's the record that yeah. was like the record that changed everything for you, right? Yeah. Um, Nobody wants to overstay their welcome, you know? You put out two or three projects mm -hmm. and no one's connecting. So I could see Cole saying, okay, this is it for me for a minute, or Kendrick saying, this is it for me. But yeah. I feel like with you, I feel like your, your spirit is more from that competitive thing that I don't see you saying like, this is my last one, I'm gonna take a couple years well, off. It's the competitive thing, and it's also just like, I'm probably one of the few people that really lives this rap life. Like, I really live this rap life for real. I'm really out here partying. You see the house. Up at the baby you show. see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm out, I'm in the streets. I'm you view like a take care of classic? Like, do you get caught up in that in any way, or do you try to stay objective about it? Um, to me, a, a classic would be a body of work that shaped um that year and the years and the years afterwards and had a massive massive impact mm -hmm. on the music being made on the culture i think i have classic albums you know which one um, so far gone take care i think so far gone is is definitely it, it being technically my first yeah. you know recognized so, yeah, definitely I, think, a classic, I, I definitely think that i definitely think um I definitely think um, "Take Care," of course, is, a, is, a, is was a big moment. You know, um, was a class. I, my my assistant right now, um, who uh, I've been with for years, I'll never forget. Like the first time, I was like, "Well, look, the way I work is I need forty here." Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. he's that's my engineer, and yeah. I like you know he knows what to do with my vocals. And I remember CJ, you know, who again is like you know we formed a ten year we formed a ten year bond, if not more now, but. Um, it is like, fast forward, it sounds like night and day, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you used to stretch out the vowels, yep. like, let's be honest, yeah. but, you know, moving forward, it changed. It was like, um, finding myself, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can always hear, you can always hear a rapper finding themselves if you yeah. give them more than, like, five or ten years, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, when, when I met Wayne, I realized that, the goal was to like get bars off, but also have these catchy nuances that people um, that people can grasp onto. Right. I tip my hat to the chess move. I mean, it was a genius. It was a genius play in the game of chess, yeah. um, and definitely, you know, warranted my first quote unquote, you know, loss in the competitive sport of of rapping. Um, by choice, obviously, because I, 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 I bowed out after realizing, like, the gap between us allowed him to drop, you know, a bomb on the world that, um, that, that really became, it, that, was all, that, was, that was all anyone cared about. You know, I, I, I sleep well at night knowing I didn't get outbarred and I didn't get, you know, dunned off by some crazy song that I, it, it was just, you know, he told the world. And I think we both enjoy 
the, um, we both enjoyed our moments of, you know, him, you know, checking, checking the young boy and me trying to be like, nah, I'm here, uh, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> Any lines uh, that stick out to you? You'd be like, oh, I know what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, yeah, there's plenty. You know, we and that that bar from that song is a real, is a real thing. You know, we met up and really spoke about all our jabs and fallouts and and you know what what prompted some of those things and um i do think it's really important that we you know as 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 wrapped up as you can get in this competitive side of things i do think it's important that when you have that much respect for somebody or or somebody has that much of a you know a fingerprint on who you are as a person it's just important to to start showing it so like you know i got to like you know, while I'm here, while he's here, while all these other people are here watching, I gotta at least, you know, pay my respects. So, you know, with that being said, like, you know, I, I anybody that knows me knows that my strongest talent is writing. That is my strongest talent. Um, but my greatest talent is writing, you know, and that's why people ask me to write songs for them. That's why people like to get in the room and write with me. You know, and that's like a, just, again, for me speaking to any new artist, like, don't let anybody tell you that you're not supposed to collaborate on you, you, you know, whatever, whatever gets you to that destination where you have, you know, a great body of work. If you need somebody to write the whole thing and all you do is just go in and track it. There, I've thing. wrote all, by the way, all my biggest songs and any song that really, really did damage for me, mm -hmm. I've wrote every single lyric. So that like the hits, yeah. Not even not the, the hits and the ones that you would like. It's the like I never. I'm I'm not gonna collaborate with somebody on any of the timestamp records. I'm not collaborating. <laughs> First of all, the music those like the music those artists make in that space. There's nothing better than that. Right. So I'll never sit here and say, oh, one dance is like the best uh, Afrobeats record. But I do think that 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 genre deserved to get this popular, and I'm very happy that. I was able to even be part of that conversation. Absolutely. At this point in your career, in your life, do you think you could ever squash things or mend things with him? Well, you know, I'm at, I'm at a I'm at a great um, healing place in my life, which is why all those people you mentioned, um, all those people you mentioned, that I really never, when I really break down the issues, when I started to sort of stop thinking from such a confrontational, paranoid, violent standpoint. I started to just really break down. What, what's our issue again? What is this over again? Mm -hmm. Like, is it, it's over a fight we had in like 2009, or it's over, a, you know, it's over the fact that we're from the same city, or it's over, the, you know. I was able to, um, you know, I was able to to mend a lot of those situations. Did Pusha go too far by revealing the child and um, presenting that to the world? Um, well, I'll say this. I tipped my hat to the chess move. I mean, it was a genius. <laughs> now they pulled up with like some, some nudes and, and we had to burn them in the backyard. Oh my I goodness, just, oh man. I felt the like Obia energy. Like, he has right. a point. He can say, yo, you brought up my lady's name. Oh, all bets are off the table. And even like, you know, even in, even in the me and Meek situation, if you listen back to those records, and it's something that we talked about before too, if you listen you back, Meek. yeah, it's, you know, we like, <laughs> we didn't really go that crazy mm -hmm. on each other. Yeah, yeah it's, the point is like, I, there's just some unwritten rules in the sport for some people, obviously yeah. not for him, and that's fine, you know? Um, and he's just made an entire career off of it, you know? And some people like his music. I personally don't, because I don't believe any of it. And I like to listen to guys that I believe. But um, but you were a Clips fan. You had the sign mic and all that stuff. So yeah, I was about to have that. I still I have it upstairs. It's Thank a decade you. of dominance. I feel like that needs to be said. Like I feel Thank like you. a lot of times it's not. I mean, when it that's there was some statistic that came out about like 400 weeks or something. You was in the top 10 or whatever mm -hmm. it was, and then if you didn't count Sicko Mode where you weren't credited, it's really 500. Like. That's which, insane. Which, like, by the way, I don't know why I wasn't credited. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't your choice? I don't know if you guys went to the toilet yet, but you know, the toilet plays Pac. What that, what, but obviously, you know what you're doing, but then to just see that like really written down and see those type of stats, like, what, like that's got to even impress yourself, right? Like, you know, um, there's just, that really showed me like, you know, what it is to have a, um, an album with like, you know, seven or eight joints on it that I know people are like, they have to be invested in this. I just remember I started seeing like on the now rights and all that, be like, you waited to see you do the freestyle to say you will and the crowd yeah. would just go crazy. I think I was probably uh, the one that took it the furthest to go and make like full blown R&B songs. And, and I think over the years, um, over the years and leading into this next decade, you know, it's something that I've grown to just embrace, embrace more. It's actually a piece of my, 
my musical character that I love the most, which is just the fact that I, you know, I do both those things and almost am able to split the time evenly. Yeah, my, my biggest regret isn't that, like, he never signed to OVO. My biggest regret would just be that, you know, we didn't give people that album, that tour, that, you know? Um, yeah, because it's just, like, you know, the two biggest artists from the city don't link. Yeah. So it's just not a good look for, for, for where we're from. So, you know, hopefully we can fix that and, um, and, and make good on the years that we missed, yeah. kind of like me and Chris did, you know? But, when, but what went wrong with Tyler, man, at the Camp Flognog, man? <laughs> um, I, I, just walk, I just walked myself into a situation. Right. So I they got- they, really upset. Um, I, um, yeah, I just, I, I, think he, I think he thought it was gonna go over really well, uh, especially like, you know, like Feel No Ways and Wu-Tang Forever were like his, no his requests. <laughs> While they are extreme, I mean, while they are undefeated and extremely <laughs> funny, yeah. Um, yeah, of course, people can start saying things that 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 hurt you, that bother you, uh, that take you, you fuck your day up, take you out of your character, especially when they're just like they're 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 curated by a group of people that are ready for the downfall of Drake in this case. Right. So it's like. You know, it can be some, it can be some, it can be some hurtful stuff, and, and when it's when it's completely false, and when it's, um, you know, when it when it, it it hits you, rubs you the wrong way. Yeah, of course. I mean, I I, don't, I think I don't know anybody. I, whoever tells you they're not is is not well, being honest. Curated by a bunch of people who just aren't on this, weren't on this boat to begin with. Um, I. <laughs> but do you feel like you crossed the line when you talking about Pusha? Um, you mentioned his woman, you know, the Duppy freestyle. Like he has know. a point. He can say, "Yo, you brought up my lady's name. Oh, all bets are off the table." That's fine. You know, like I said, we all think differently, right? right. And even like you know, even in even in the Me and Meek situation, if you listen back to those records, and it's something that we talked about before too. If you listen you back, Meek. yeah, mm -hmm. it's you know, we like. <laughs> we didn't really go that crazy mm -hmm. on each other. Yeah. And we left Nick out of it and we left kind of family out of it mm -hmm. for the most part. Like you it's both just knew each other more yeah. stuff about each other that you didn't go to also. I think that I think that that's where all of this kind of stems from. Um it's all kind of rooted in 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 that in that situation. So some boy when you squashed it with me, it was like that means Drake and Rick Ross can make records again. Well, that was the, that was like <laughs> one of the most painful parts for me. I mean, aside from just like the rift that that situation put between the family and like you know, obviously changed me and Nikki a lot, probably forever. You know, like that situation took its toll. But um, but one of the most painful parts was just being like, man, Ross is like one of my OGs, one of my mentors, and one of my favorite people in the game. And I might not be able to make a record with him again because he has to pick a side. It was like, damn, you know? And that was kind of the case with a, with a, lot, of the, with a lot of that, you know? Yeah. More so Meek because, you know, Meek's a bigger artist than, like, than, than, than the guy that I'm beefing with right now. So it's like, it, it really came down to like more people picking sides, yeah. you know? And people um, liking those yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had been talking a lot about um, about her and Sharapova going back and forth over the years, and um, she had made this made this comment to me, and she was like, "Well, look, um, if you're gonna go if you're gonna go again, you know, you you that like, she's like that beat that's on in there. It's just that she's like you gotta finish it. Mm. She and you know she's a top competitor, right. so she was like you gotta finish it. Like I'm talking about." done mm -hmm. over and it's got to be something that pe that everyone that he's with and him have to hear mm -hmm. can't ignore right. it right yeah. you can't you can't do some sh shit that's just for the moment and then it goes away yeah she kind of put this battery in my back funny <laughs> enough and um i do think it's really important that we you know as as, as wrapped up as you can get in this competitive side of things, I do think it's important that when you have that much respect for somebody or, or somebody has that much of a, you know, a fingerprint on who you are as a person, it's just important to, to start showing it. So, yeah, no, I, th I think Ross has just always been one of my, one of my favorite rappers um, ever. 
Well, I think we've come together before and, um, and tried to link and make music. And I think we were always kind of forcing it. I think there was always like resentment on both sides. Um, you know, really at the end of the day, you know, again, when you kind of step away from it and break it down, you start to feel silly because it's like over like girl stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously that can snowball into like real shit. Because you're this chart topper, but all, you listen to these songs, they're not like what we were taught were like, some of them are, but some of them aren't. Most of them aren't like what you would think the radio single is. Mm -hmm. you, do, you, do you think you sort of redefine what a hit is with your consistency? A, I mean, even all the way up until God's Plan, right? Like God's Plan was a song that I recorded like on a whim in my condo and thought nothing of it. And I know people punish him for that. You know, sometimes artists, <laughs> artists send a song, you know, I was looking through my text the other day and Young Thug sent me that little Baby song to get on and I was so mad because I just Wait, like, Lil Baby off is off so oh, much fun. It's interesting because like listening to your music is like you're super successful, you're one of the best to ever do it, yet you still have this chip on your shoulder. I remember listening to Diplomatic Immunity. You know, you had the line where you say you're black excellence, but it was come to you, it's not the same though. Like, why do you think that still, like, I guess, that dark cloud is over you, over your head? Um, right. uh, you. yeah, so, <laughs> um, but, but anyway, yeah, I think initially my goal, my goal was, was just to, to be uh, a protege that didn't flop, you know? Mm -hmm. I just wanted mm -hmm. to be somebody that was, like, remotely as important as my mentor. Um, and, yeah, from there, you know, I think a lot of things changed when, when Wayne went to jail. Um, yeah. because it was really a moment of realization, like, all right, this guy pretty much put all his trust and, and all his, like, power behind us, and now, like, it's on our shoulders to, like, make sure that when he comes home, you know, it's kind of like the same thing, like, if your man goes in and does a bid, and you guys are doing a thing together, you want to make sure that when he comes out, you come pick him up in a nice right. car yeah. and say, yo, here, you know, so it was, it, was, it was that type of responsibility where it's like, yo, when my, when my guy comes home, I just want to make sure that this thing is bigger than where, where, where it was when we left off. I was like, oh, for the last hurrah, like, let me try and go sicko mode number one with Jay. Like, um, but it was, it was, it was tough. He was, he was on, he was, he was doing shows at the time. And, you know, um, obviously like, um, thank you to like No ID and Guru. Those guys really like pushed hard to get me that verse. Um,